Hi, and welcome to Smart Ways to Gain YouTube Subscribers Part 4 Video Quality Tips. In this episode, Part 4, we're going to talk about the little tricks and techniques that help you kind of create the technical aspects of videos in terms of recording with quality, doing audio with quality, and other little technical aspects that people may not be aware of and applications that can help the overall quality of your videos. So let's go to the first part of the list and check out the first tip. Number one, lighting and sound. Now, lighting and sound is an incredibly important aspect of any video, obviously, because it's the two things that you see in here for a video. That's what a video is. Um, but the key things that can you can do to improve the quality of your video is to light your room as absolutely as bright as possible. And that means turning on, I have, in my room, I have three light sources. I have the, my ceiling lamp, my lamp directly behind me over here, and, um, and a desk lamp, like a halogen desk lamp that's shining directly in my face when I'm filming just above the camera. And it's kind of annoying, you get used to it after a while, and it's so important because if you can light up your scene, you can be seen better, people can see your facial expressions, and you can communicate better to the camera and then to the audience. Now with audio, it's a little bit more tricky because you have a couple issues to deal with. One is that you want to make sure that your mic is a appropriate distance from your of your from your face, so your peas don't pop. You don't get this kind of like very loud sound for certain certain phone phonemes and things like that when you're pronouncing words. And the other is more of a technical and complicated issue, and that's audio sync with the video. A lot of people, for some reason, their webcams or once they're converted to and uploaded to, to YouTube, their audio and video are no longer in sync. And so you can see that words are being not are not matching my lips, and and it's very annoying to see this. And basically you have to solve this and there's a variety of ways to solve it um, one is you know if, if, if it's being captured that way I would go to the website or the forums of the maker of the camera and ask um, if there's any new uh, software to download sometimes the CD that's included with your webcam um, isn't up to date it has bugs various issues with your operating system what what have you and uh, you can download the drivers for it and the software for capturing sometimes both will be updated independently so go to your website if you're having those type of issues and see if there's a fix for the audio sync it's very important I would say that if you can't figure it out with your current webcam buy a new one uh, a place that will take it back because there may be something defective or incompatible with your computer. Go to buy another one and uh, see if that fixes it. And if it doesn't, um, go to a store that has a liberal return policy. So um, I strongly recommend people take care of those issues um, because having audio out of sync with your video is just a deal breaker. You're never going to get subscribers if that is a major issue in all your videos. Number two, video resolution tips. Okay, there's a lot of uh, aspects to video resolution and how it relates to YouTube videos. First and foremost, all YouTube videos are converted to 320 by 240 pixels in resolution, meaning 320 pixels wide by 240 pixels tall. And um, they all run at 30 frames per second. They use the uh, uh, flash video codec essentially that uses that that, you, that everyone watches essentially so any video uploaded it gets converted to that format and that resolution and that frame rate essentially um, so but it doesn't mean that you should upload necessarily at that resolution personally I like to upload all my videos assuming that they can, they can fit under the hundred megabyte file size limit which YouTube enforces for all accounts and um, because they will do the, 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 the crunching down for me and usually the video looks a little bit better if you upload it especially things that have small text or things like that I'm mean, obviously you don't want the text to be too small because you're going to lose literally 75 percent of your detail um, when you go from say 640 by 480 pixels video a, a full-size image to their format there it's exactly a quarter in size so keep that in mind but definitely it makes text a little sharper because it went what it does is it down samples all the pixels so essentially it turns four pixels into one pixel but it will keep the color of the it will average the color of those four pixels this is kind of a technical aspect but this is a reason why you try to upload it the highest quality possible assuming that it's under 100 meg and and hopefully it will make your YouTube quality video a lot better um, there's also other other aspects to consider and when you're um, importing onto your computer um, digital video like from a camcorder and not a webcam this is another aspect that I don't have a lot of experience with I have done it 
I don't have a camcorder, but I had to do some editing for a friend and using his camcorder footage. And I found out that camcorder footage, first of all, is 720 pixels by 480 pixels interlaced, meaning that the, the size is essentially uh, 720 pixels wide and 480 pixels tall. But it's interlaced, meaning that it only captures every other scan line in that video 60 frames per second or a full frame at 30 frames per second. You don't have to know all this essentially, but what happens is when you import it into a standard digital video file, it, if anything moving fast across the screen, it will create a jagged edge essentially because the old image is being drawn and it has to update every th every 60th of a second. And a lot of times that will move quickly across the screen and you'll get this jaggy response. So anytime you import from a digital uh, video source, essentially a camcorder, you want to make sure in the settings when you're importing to click de-interlacing on. And there should be a checkbox somewhere in your software that's, that comes with it. It may do it automatically if you never noticed this before. Um, I know that uh, Windows Media Encoder, which is free, download from, I, I will give a link to a various sets of applications that I use and that are very handy, that are completely free off the internet, assuming that you use Windows XP. If you use a Mac or Linux, I'm sure Mac's uh, video software is 10 times better than, than Microsoft's. Um, and if you're using Linux, I don't really know that, um, how to do digital video on Linux. I'm sure there's applications out there, I'm sorry. Um, but um, it's very important to deinterlace, and also you have now a, per, usually when you deinterlace and it's converted to a digital file, it's now progressive scan, meaning that there, it doesn't interlace anymore. It takes a full 30 frames per second um, um, type of video. And, but now you've, you've still got the problem that it's no longer, it's 720 by, by 480, which is no longer a 4 by 3 aspect ratio. <laughs> and you have to either letterbox it, meaning you have to shrink that 720 pixels down so it fits in the 640 by 480 resolution, or you have to chop off 40 pixels from each side. And um, a lot of times the software will do this. Um, if you don't, it will, sh it will compress all those pixels inward, and it will create a kind of smushed, thin, skinny image. You can tell this, I, you can tell people that don't either know how to convert this or don't care on YouTube videos, you can tell it's captured by a camcorder because everyone will look super thin and it will look unnatural. It'll, it'll, it, it adds, you know, another, um, it tries to compress all those in and it, it just d doesn't work. So you want to, I'd say chop off the edges unless you have a panoramic view and it's absolutely vital that you keep the outside of those 40 pixels on each side of your screen intact. And then therefore I would recommend letterboxing it, meaning that shrink the image down so the edges fit in. You're going to have a black border on top and the bottom like with a DVD that's in letterbox form. Um, this gets kind of complicated. Um, there's software tools that do this type of thing and there are free, but it's kind of beyond the scope of this video. Um, you feel free to, to email me via YouTube if you uh, want to know the details on that kind of stuff. But um, it's very important to convert things correctly. And I will give a whole host of free applications, like I said, at the end of this video about things that uh, I use, essentially, to get my videos uh, onto YouTube in the, in the proper format and all those type of things. So um, I hope um, this is of help. I've kind of said a lot here. And um, video resolution, you know, be mindful of it. It's important. Number three, presentation. Now with three, maybe I'm stating the obvious here, but there's a few things that uh, need to be mentioned when you're talking about video presentation. And that at first and foremost is, you know, looking at the camera, you know, looking straight into the camera the majority of the time when you're talking. I, I, and a lot of people like have a tendency to like watch themselves on their screen, like they're, that's where the camera is, but you're not making connection with people unless you're looking at the camera, I feel anyway, and it's something to be conscious of. Sometimes it's hard to do. Sometimes I'll look on the left edge or right edge of my camera and it just, it's distracting for, for when I see it and I, when I watch my videos again, I, I really um, try to focus on the center of the camera the majority of the time when I'm, when I'm speaking. Um, other aspects that um, I like to consider is, um, you know, being um, in a good posture, essentially. I have a, I have a chair that um, coincidentally is good for YouTube videos. It doesn't have a back. It's kind of a posture chair that um, makes me sit upright and not hunch down or anything like that when I'm talking. That it, Maybe if I was sitting on a, a regular chair, it would be more of an issue. Try to mix it up. 
record in a different location every once in a while. Um, record while while walking down the street. I've seen those type of videos, and I think well, anything that kind of adds variety beyond just the topics that you're you're talking about, I think are important. I don't tend to do that with my videos, but I think that it does add a layer of creativity and variety that spices things up a little bit. You know, setting in different positions of the room during a video just for an effect wherever it's appropriate. I think all these things are great ideas. And um, I try to um, utilize them, or I think you should try to utilize them as much as you can because they're really easy and it's, it just takes a little bit of editing to um, achieve kind of a different effect. And finally, I want to rattle off some of my favorite free video or media applications that I use on a regular basis to make my videos. And um, I'm going to be providing a link in the uh, description section as well so people can easily find them. So let's take a look at that list. So here's a short list of the free pieces of software that I use to make YouTube videos. I'll be providing a link to each of these. Um, you may already have many of these installed on your computer already. Uh, first and foremost is Microsoft Movie Maker. Um, if I, I recommend Microsoft Movie Maker um, despite its many bugs, unfortunately. Um, it is quite powerful, but you want to convert all uh, video files, whatever they may be, to the Windows media format before editing them in Microsoft Movie Maker. It will make it much more stable and um, you'll run into less problems that way. Um, number two, I would recommend using Firefox in conjunction with number three, which is a video downloader. This is a program or a plugin used in Firefox that can um, allow you to download YouTube videos directly and then you convert those using Super which is a transcoder and that's a piece of software that converts one video format to another so YouTube videos are a flash video format and you can convert those to uh, Windows media files or whatever um, so they can be edited and put into videos that's how I use uh, people's video responses in my Dear God show. Um, there's CDX which is an mp3 ripper it's very powerful it's also free um, and it allows you to do soundtracks and things from CDs. Of course, beware of copyrighted material because I feel that one day um, uh, people are going to start losing a lot of videos when, when Google slash YouTube starts to crack down on that kind of stuff. Um, and all my, almost all my videos are vulnerable. Um, six is K-Lite Codex Suite. But basically, K-Lite is a video player. It'll play anything almost. And it's very nice to download pretty much anything and that player will play it. Um, and then also number seven, uh, Windows Media Encoder, which is a uh, also a transcoder, but also it will take um, camcorder video and import it into uh, a video format of your choice, yeah, being the standard uh, DV format or Microsoft Media Video. And this concludes part four of Smart Ways to Gain YouTube Subscribers. Part five will focus on ethical gray areas. So until next time, take care.